SpongeBob. God, I'm sick of him. Why can't his show just freaking end already? The first three seasons and the first movie were so good, but after that, the show just became this unwatchable, cringy mess, and I hate it. Saying it's on life support would be an understatement. And the fact that they're making that stupid spin-off series which goes completely against Mr. Hillenburg's wishes, that is awful. Seriously. However, with all these personal problems I have with the show nowadays, this review is actually of a remake of a Spongebob game that came out right near the end of the show's prime. It's Spongebob Squarepants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. Released for the Xbox One, PS4, Nintendo Switch, and PC by THQ Nordic. If you've been watching my channel for the past 3-4 years, you may remember I actually reviewed the original Battle for Bikini Bottom on GameCube for my old review series, Cooper's Perspective. While I do have my own personal problems with Cooper's Perspective, I'd actually say my original Battle for Bikini Bottom review is one of the better episodes. I guess you can also say that this episode of Coop's Reviews can be seen as sort of a re-review. So I apologize in advance if I repeat the same stuff I said three years earlier. Back then I was reviewing the GameCube version of Battle for Bikini Bottom. For this review, any and all comparisons I make between Rehydrated and the original Battle for Bikini Bottom, I'll be using the superior original Xbox version. This is easily the best version of the original Battle for Bikini Bottom, and I would recommend getting this version if you could find it for a good price. And for Rehydrated itself, I'll be using the PC version for this review since it runs at 60 frames a second and is understandably the best version to get. PC Master Race, y'all. This is also technically the first time the home console version of Battle for Bikini Bottom has ever seen some sort of release on PC. You know, instead of the point-and-click adventure game the original Battle for Bikini Bottom on PC was back in 2003. With all that said and done, let's see if Rehydrated is a worthy remake to add to the pile of current remasters and remakes nowadays. The original Battle for Bikini Bottom was developed by Heavy Iron Studios, but Rehydrated was handled by a newer dev team, Purple Lamp Studios. I found it weird at first that Heavy Iron wasn't brought back to remake their own game, but hey, maybe Purple Lamp can deliver a decent game. Let's see what they gave us. The plot of Rehydrated is the exact same as the original Battle for Bikini Bottom, obviously. Plankton is working on a new experiment to have an army of robots take over Bikini Bottom. Unfortunately, Plankton forgot to switch the robot's commands from Don't Obey to Obey, thus the robots start to run amok in Bikini Bottom later that night. Meanwhile, Spongebob and Patrick are playing robots and racehorses, to which Spongebob wishes that they had real robots to play with. This leads to Patrick using his magic wishing shell to bring Spongebob's wish to life. Obviously, this leads to them waking up tomorrow to see that Plankton's robots have taken over Bikini Bottom. So it's up to Spongebob, Patrick, Sandy, and everyone else to defeat all the robots and save Bikini Bottom. That's the plot of Rehydrated. Just like the original Battle for Bikini Bottom, it's alright. All of the same sight gags and jokes from the original are present, so it's faithful in that aspect. The visuals are the biggest upgrade in this remake. A lot of the time, the game can look pretty decent. The character animations are... serviceable, but not terrible. This might sound odd, but I feel like some of the upgraded character animations were not as good as the original. A lot of the older character animations already look just fine, so seeing Rehydrated change some of these moments or make stiffer recreations of them was kind of disappointing. The voice acting is the exact same as the original game. No joke. The voice clips used in Rehydrated are just ripped directly from the original Battle for Bikini Bottom, which is mostly a good thing. The voice acting from everyone in the original game was already just fine, so I'm not too upset that they didn't bother re-recording these old lines. Some of the dialogue didn't need to be re-recorded, though the stiffer character animations this time around kind of undermine how good the voice acting actually is. For example, here's how this iconic Mrs. Puff scene plays out in the original and in Rehydrated. Why do you want all that artwork? Don't ask questions you aren't prepared to handle the answer to! Why do you want all that artwork? Don't ask questions you aren't prepared to handle the answer to! Yeah. Anyone else feel like the original animation is still better? While I'm not bothered by the voices staying the exact same, the only character that I'm upset that they didn't re-record their dialogue for is, predictably, Mr. Krabs. Now, voice actor Joe White was hired to provide the voices for Mr. Krabs and Mermaid Man in the original Battle for Bikini Bottom, since Heavy Iron apparently couldn't afford Clancy Brown and the late Ernest Borgine, respectively. 
I can understand fully that they couldn't have re-recorded Mermaid Man's voice clips since Ernest unfortunately passed away in 2012, but why didn't Purple Lamp bring in Clancy Brown to re-record Mr. Krabs' voice in the remake? I'm gonna assume that Nickelodeon didn't give Purple Lamp Studios a real budget to work with, so they must have decided that they should just reuse the old voice clips and focus more on redoing the gameplay and graphics. It's quite a shame. I've seen people defend this by saying they wanted to make a more authentic feeling remake, but would it have really been that big of a deal if they just fixed the Mr. Krabs voice? It is sad that we're never gonna get to hear Ernest voice Mermaid Man in this game. But Clancy is still with us, and has said that he loves voicing Mr. Krabs. So I don't see why Nickelodeon couldn't just give Purple Lamp the money to bring in one voice actor to record some lines. Come on now. Whatever, that's all I have to say about the story, let's get on to the gameplay. Rehydrated's gameplay involves you venturing through several levels collecting various things while getting to play as three different characters. Spongebob, Patrick, and Sandy. Let's start with Spongebob. He can double jump, he can use his bubble wand to swat away enemies, which I mistakenly called a jellyfishing net in the original review, my apologies for that, and he has some special moves brought on by his bubble abilities. He can slam on enemies using bubble shoes, which can also be used to activate buttons and other things. He can also shoot straight up in the air using a viking bubble hat, which can kill enemies and activate switches. Later on, Spongebob can acquire the bubble bowl and the cruise bubble power-ups. The Bubble Bowl can allow Spongebob to bowl a bubble at enemies and other things to make progress in levels. It works pretty well, though Spongebob still tiptoes forward which can sometimes throw off your aim. I'm not really too sure why they kept that in. The Cruise Bubble allows Spongebob to send a bubble missile at enemies and buttons that are out of reach. It works just fine, though the aiming controls in Rehydrated were inverted for some stupid reason. It didn't stop me from completing the game, but I would have liked an option to switch the controls because it seriously kept throwing me off. Spongebob can also wall jump in certain levels and it is way faster and rehydrated compared to the original Battle for Bikini Bottom. This is technically a good thing, but it did kind of throw me off whenever I first played this game. Once I got used to it though, I really started to love wall jumping. I would kill to see a remake or DLC of the movie game for rehydrated using this wall jump. Seriously. All in all, Spongebob is a solid character who controls super well. A+. Moving on to Patrick, he's basically the heavy set character in this game. He can double jump and do a belly slam to attack enemies. He can also pick up enemies and other objects to hurl them at other enemies and switch buttons. He also has a great slam attack that I love using to stun enemies so I can pick them up and throw them. It feels just as good as it was in the original. Again, Patrick's a solid character. I don't have too many problems with him. Then there's Sandy, who was my favorite character to play as in the original Battle for Bikini Bottom, and that still holds true in Rehydrated. Sandy's got great ground control, can double jump, and also has some solid combat for defeating enemies. What makes Sandy so great in this game, however, are her lasso moves. She can tie up enemies and send them flying away. She can also use her lasso to swing on certain objects, which is still just as fun as it was in the original, though the swinging physics aren't the exact same and can take some getting used to. Still fun though. One thing that's really unique to Sandy in this remake, and also kind of game-breaking, is that she can now lasso enemies while still in mid-air. Now, this is already kind of convenient, but the one thing that makes this kind of broken is that you can perform an extra jump after you lasso an enemy. So say, when you do a double jump and lasso an enemy in the air, you'll still be able to perform an extra jump. So in a way, Sandy can perform this triple jump of sorts. This was very likely just an oversight on Purple Lamp Studios' part, but I honestly love it. It's such a great move to use. Sandy's the freaking best. And that's how all the characters play. So how are the levels they play in? Well, this is where the remake remains the exact same as the original in almost every aspect. Besides the graphics, obviously. The point of every level in Battle for Bikini Bottom is that you're trying to look for 10 golden spatulas per level. Basically, if you played Mario 64, just look at it like that. The golden spatulas are basically the power stars, and the shiny objects are essentially coins. It's very straightforward things, you just do tasks given to you by certain characters or other parts of the level, and you get a golden spatula. Very simple. There are a hundred in total to collect, and you need to collect at least 75 golden spatulas to beat the game. It's quite a hassle to get them all, but I think it's pretty worth it. It was a pretty nice stroll down memory lane while playing through these levels with all the upgraded visuals. 
Jellyfish Fields is still a solid, fun starting level for beginners. Downtown Bikini Bottom is still my favorite with its chill music and fun set pieces. Though I did notice these platforms right here aren't slippery like they were in the original. A bit weird, but not something that'll ruin the whole game. Goo Lagoon is still great. Rock Bottom is still just as terrifying as ever. The atmosphere here is pulled off super well with these better graphics. The Mermelair was still a solid level to play through again. I'm still a bit disheartened that they couldn't fix Mermaid Man's voice. And hearing the late Tim Conway as Barnacle Boy is a bit sad. But I still really like this level. Sand Mountain is a lot of fun. Though this level is where I should bring up how the sliding controls work. The physics and controls for sliding are just fine on their own. But the camera for these parts is really weird. Every time you turn, the camera rotates with your character. It wasn't like that in the original Battle for Bikini Bottom, so I have no clue why Rehydrated bothered tweaking it this way. Not a terrible change, just weird. The Kelp Forest is... okay. I don't hate it, but it certainly isn't that much fun here either. It looks fine, and some of the puzzles are still pretty fun, but once you enter the kelp caves, the pacing just grinds to a near halt. It is way too slow and tedious in this area. Plus, the inverted missile controls were the most obnoxious during this part of the game. But the slide section at the end was still a lot of fun. However, my mind might be playing tricks on me, but did they change the kelp slide in this remake? Like, the original felt so open and grand, but in Rehydrated, it just feels kind of claustrophobic? What does claustrophobic mean? It means he's afraid of Santa Claus. No, it doesn't. Ho, ho, ho! <laughs> Stop it, Patrick! You're scaring him! Ho, ho, ho! Okay, I wasn't trying to make a reference to that decent post-movie episode, but I couldn't resist. Where was I? Oh yeah, the levels. The Flying Dutchman's Graveyard is still one of my favorites. I just love the atmosphere here, it's so damn cool looking. Not to mention that faster wall jump boost on Spongebob's part makes this section a bit easier, or harder, if you're more used to the original version's mechanics. Then there's the dream levels, which are... decent. Some dreams are better than others. I still had a lot of fun with the Slide and Sandy's dream. Squidward's dream was still a decent platforming challenge. Patrick's dream still got a good laugh out of me, but Mr. Krabs' dream is still the worst. And with the crappy inverted missile controls, that really just made this part of the game so much more irritating. Also, I want to mention something that doesn't have to do with Rehydrated, but while I was recording footage of the original Xbox version of Battle for Bikini Bottom, when I made it to this part of Sandy's stream, the game suddenly froze on me. That was a bit strange. Okay, those were the levels. How were the bosses? They're fine. King Jellyfish is still amusing the fight, a nice and quick first mini-boss. The Sandy Robot boss fight was also great to fight again, though I feel like Purple Lamp made it slightly easier than the original. It just seems like I beat the boss a whole lot quicker here. The Prawn fight is alright. Spongebob tiptoeing while you're trying to time the bubble rolls correctly is a bit obnoxious, though that always happened in the original too. So I guess the game's still faithful in that aspect. The Patrick Robot is still a fun boss fight, made slightly easier since Spongebob's bubble bowl can now bounce on the acid water to reach the Patrick Robot. I'm not sure if this was just another oversight or Purple Lamp just wanting to make the boss go by a bit faster. There is one detail that I'm not sure if I brought up in my original Battle for Bikini Bottom review, but I like how during the Sandy Robot fight, it's just Spongebob and Patrick, then with the Patrick Robot, it's just Spongebob and Sandy. And I guess Squidward too, though he's not playable. I don't know, I always like that little detail. Back to the last two bosses, Flying Dutchman is easy, and the final boss fight with Robot Spongebob is still a decent challenge. Until you go inside of his head. This is where I noticed Purple Lamp basically neutered the final boss. In the original Battle for Bikini Bottom, if you died at any point during Phase 2, you had to start over from the start of Phase 2. In Rehydrated, however, Purple Lamp put in checkpoints between each part to somewhat make the final boss a bit easier this time around. Lame. I can understand if some people had issues with the original version of this boss fight, but don't feel the need to pussify it in the remake. I was still looking for a decent challenge, and now it just comes off as kind of underwhelming. Well, the inverted missile controls during the fight are a definite bitch to deal with in this remake, so I guess Rehydrated wins this round. 
After the final boss, this leads you to the end credits stage as Ball Mode Spongebob, which you can also use in the Bikini Bottom Hub area. The ball controls in the remake are actually really smooth, probably better than the original even. Though strangely enough, you can actually jump in ball mode, which wasn't in the original game, jeez. Imagine how broken this move would be in some missions in the movie game. I would have killed to have this awesome ball mode, god damn. Okay, how's the soundtrack? It's really good, in the sense that it's the exact same soundtrack for the original Battle for Bikini Bottom, just completely reused for this remake. Yeah, there's no remixes of any kind. It's just the original soundtrack. That's fine. I always love Sabri Music's soundtrack for Battle for Bikini Bottom. And I'm happy the soundtrack was even made available for download on Steam. I am just a little disappointed we couldn't get any sweet remixes of these iconic levels. Especially Downtown Bikini Bottom. A remix soundtrack would have been nice, but I also would have suggested an option to switch back to the original OST like the Spyro remake offered. For now though, I'm happy Rehydrated just used the same soundtrack. It's still just as great and catchy as ever, so shut your mouth, Game Explain. Also, who knows? Maybe a group of SpongeBob fans can come together and make their own remix album for Battle for Bikini Bottom, and make it a mod for the game on PC. That would be pretty cool. Also, I didn't 100% this game, though I'm gonna assume it just gives you the same reward you get on the original game, so... Yeah, get all the spatulas if you want to. If not, that's fine. However, I did manage to get all the achievements on Steam since they were actually glitched up when I played the game at launch. Like, say, I went on one file and got 50 spatulas, and then started a second file and got 50 spatulas there. For some reason, the achievement would add those two together and would assume I got all 100 spatulas. It also did the same glitch on the achievements for Patrick's socks. So yeah, I got all the Steam achievements pretty quickly. Whoops. It's been a few months since the game's release, so I'm not sure if they patched this or not, but if they still haven't, then go take advantage of it. Also, remember the cut Robot Squidward boss fight that you can see some concept art for in the original Battle for Bikini Bottom? Well, they kind of brought it back for Rehydrated. It's not in the single player campaign, it's actually a new multiplayer, which is a swarm multiplayer? Something like that? I haven't had anyone to play it with, so I don't really have much else to say about it. Though I will say, I do love that they reused the whole Squidward robot boss fight. It's still nice to see that they brought that cut concept back to life in some way. So that's cool. Anyways, that's really all I have to say about this remake. Final verdict. Is this remake any good? Is it worth getting? Could it have been better? Well, for all three parts, yeah. I don't think this is a bad remake by any means, though it could have used a bit more upgrades. The new graphics are nice and all, but with the remake using the same audio from the original, it feels sort of half-baked. A remix soundtrack and remastered voice acting would have been nice to see, especially for Mr. Krabs. But again, I'm just gonna assume that Purple Lamp were not given that huge a budget when tasked to remake Battle for Bikini Bottom. It is such a rare thing for a licensed video game of all things to get the remake treatment. Just shows how much of a cult following the original game had. I do really wish Heavy Iron could have been brought back to remake the game themselves, but I'm gonna assume that Nickelodeon just wanted to go with the cheapest option. For what they had, Purple Lamp did an alright job remaking this game. For Nick, it might have just been a quick cash grab. But Purple Lamp really set out to make a decently functioning and solidly crafted remake that also stays true to the original game. The improved graphics are nice, the game plays just fine, plus the soundtrack and original audio sound good too. All in all, Rehydrated is a solid enough time and not the worst choice for anyone who hasn't played Battle for Bikini Bottom just yet. If you do want to play the original game with its original graphics and everything, do try to hunt down the original Xbox version of the game. However, since Rehydrated was technically the first time the console version of Battle for Bikini Bottom came to PC, I'm sure getting the PC version of Rehydrated will be very beneficial with all the mods I'm sure the Spongebob community will bring to it. If you love the original game, Rehydrated should not disappoint. If you haven't played the original game, this remake isn't a bad place to pick. For $30, it's not bad for the price. And definitely get it when there's a good price drop for it. Get this game if you were at all interested. So, um, yeah, I've been doing this for like four years and I'm still not too sure how to end reviews. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Support me on Patreon. Hope you enjoyed the video. 
Yeah. Also, Band Geeks is the best episode of SpongeBob ever, by the way. Okay, I'm signing out. Bye.